In this video, we'll discuss the use of InfoBurst to manage data for a connected Excelsius dashboard. The use of multiple data sources in a single dashboard, for example, web intelligence or direct queries against a database. The use of caching of dashboard data to improve overall dashboard performance. The connecting of a dashboard from the Excelsius Designer to the InfoBurst data cache. And then finally, the scheduling of the refresh of our dashboard data using date time rules and perhaps external events like trigger files or the results of SQL queries. In InfoBurst, we start with our data source or data sources. In this example, we'll use a dashboard that's pulling data from two separate sources. We'll work with a web intelligence report and also the results of a query against a database. In this example, we'll use an access database where we've written a query to return the data we require. Once we've defined our data sources, the next step is to build what we call an XML data cache, or XDC. And we have an example set up here. Within the XDC, we are defining one or more data sources. We are not bound by the number of data sources or by the types of data sources. So in this example, we're utilizing a data source that is a web intelligence report. We're also utilizing our direct database query. So within the XDC, we can have as many data sources as we like. From a particular data source, we can select one or more ranges of data. Then it's the XDC that is scheduled for refresh. So for this first uh, data source, we're using our web intelligence report. Uh, we've added the report, and you can see here at the bottom that we have the option to select from one or more parts available within the report. We can come down and preview these parts, so here you can see we have a, a simple cross-tab and perhaps other tables of data. Now we've selected this second uh, block here, the second table, which is returning us state and revenue. So all we do is select our block, we name our range or block of data. This is the range that will be mapped to our Excelsius model and then we save that particular range. And At this point, all we need to do is refresh our XDC to create the cache, which will then be accessed from our dashboard. So while we're refreshing, we can move over to our Excelsius dashboard uh, and take a look at how we've set up that connection from Excelsius to the InfoBurst server. So let's start with the data connection. Under Data and Connections, we have our standard series of Excelsius connectors. But for InfoBurst applications, we've created our own set of connectors that allow us to do special things like querying existing caches or writing data back to a database and uh, some other unique applications that we'll talk about in later videos. Uh, for this particular example, we're using our standard cache connector. So I've got one configured here, and if we start out under the Connections tab, uh, we're simply defining the location of the InfoBurst server and then our InfoBurst user credentials. Once these items are supplied, we have a list of the XDCs that are available for use with this connector. We're using our XDC1 XDC that we just previewed. Once I've selected my XDC, it's a simple matter of mapping the range or ranges of data to the appropriate section of our uh, Excel model. So I've got uh, multiple ranges in this XDC. I've already selected range 1, and we're simply mapping that range to the appropriate section of the uh, Excel model. And then finally, our Usage tab, we do have options for refresh on load or at uh, certain time intervals or based on the results of a, of a trigger cell. So if we close this connection and preview um, our cache connector, we're using two different components to visualize this data, a pie chart and a simple uh, list view. So the data you see here is coming out of the InfoBurst cache. The Web Intelligence Report was refreshed behind the scenes. We created a cache of data in XML format, and there it sits in our database waiting to be accessed by the dashboard. So instead of the user waiting for real-time queries or refreshes to occur, that's been done on the back end, and the data is available in cache, which means a much more uh, performant dashboard. Okay, let's go back to InfoBurst and look at our second data source. Remember, we set up a database connection and we wrote a query against that connection to return us a bit of data from our database table. So back in the XDC, we have added our database as our second data source, and from that database we selected our query one. Now you can see here we've, uh, we've got the resulting columns from that query, and we can create our cache as is and get back a, a table with these columns, or we can format this data by creating simple cross tabs right here in the XDC, so I could grab my 
data elements and create a simple cross tab and even do calculations on that cross tab at both a row and column level if necessary. The idea here is uh, if we need the uh, data formatted, why not do it ahead of time with the XDC where we can format and aggregate before the data ever gets to the dashboard. For our purposes here, we'll just create a simple table or block of data. Now we're going to end up with a, with a cache, roughly 20 or 30 rows, uh, with state's revenue information. But as is often the case, we don't need the entire uh, block of data, the entire cache in the dashboard at runtime. Typically, the users are making selections to pull back different uh, types of data. And in this example, the user will be using a, a, a selector to pass in a state's value. So the goal here is to select a subset of the cache based on the user selection. To do this, we're going to employ something we call cache query. And the idea with cache query is that we're going to create this overall cache and then create a simple SQL query against that cache to retrieve only the piece of the cache that we need for that given application. So here, we've written a query that will return us um, um, information from the cache based on the state's value, and then we'll pass in that state's value via a, a selector in the dashboard. So let's go take a look at that in Excelsius. So now we're working with a second block of data in the cache, which is coming from our database table, but we're going to use a different connector. This time we're working with the query connector. With the query connector, we're still referencing the XDC, the cache, but we're also referencing a query that we've written against that cache and then mapping the results of that query to our model. So here is our second connector, our query connector. Again, we've defined the server location, credentials, and selected our XDC. Then we move to the Mappings tab. The first step here is selecting the query that we've written. That was cache query 1. We're mapping the results of that query to the range on our Excel model. And then finally, we're mapping to the query parameters that we've set up in our Excel model. So what we've done here is set up a few fields that label the, the uh, selector value, which is state, and then the blank value here, which is the shaded area, uh, is where we're going to deposit the user selection from their state's selector. Over on the Usage tab, we have some, again, options here for get data on load, or in this case, we're going to trigger the connector when the selector value changes. So as they select different states, we'll pass in that state's value to the query and get back the appropriate data. Let's preview the dashboard again and see the query connector in action. So against that range of data from the cache query, I've mapped a few uh, components. Uh, we've got our list view, and then I've got another list view over here that's just showing us the entire cache so we can see what we're selecting from. Here's my selector, so as a user makes a selection here, that value triggers the uh, query connector, which in turn runs a query against the cache and returns the data that we've selected. So as we make different selections, this data is being pulled from the cache via query. And again, we're only previewing or selecting the data that's necessary from this larger cache. And you can imagine in, in larger caches of data, hundreds or thousands of rows of data, this is a very efficient way to handle the cache where we're pulling only what we need instead of the entire available cache. Let's move back to InfoBurst to look at the last piece, which is the scheduling of the XDC refresh. This is an XDC schedule. Within the schedule, we're defining one or more XDCs that we'd like to refresh on this schedule. So we can add as many XDCs as we like uh, to a schedule. Uh, if we have five XDCs that need to kick off every hour, we would simply add them all to the same schedule and set up our, our frequency accordingly. In terms of frequency, we have a variety of options for configuring date, time, um, hourly, daily, monthly, at whatever intervals you choose. You can get very uh, specific with these schedules. We can also use things like custom calendars and date macros. Or we can kick off the refresh of our scheduled XTCs using external events. So we might want to kick off our data refresh or our dashboard data refresh. Uh, based on the existence of a trigger file or perhaps the results of a SQL query.
To recap, Infoburst can be used to manage data for a connected Excelsius dashboard. With Infoburst, we can use data for multiple data sources like a web intelligence report or direct database queries to supply data to our dashboards. We looked at the caching of dashboard data to improve overall dashboard performance. We looked at the use of the Infoburst connectors in Excelsius to connect our dashboard to the Infoburst data cache. And finally, the use of the Infoburst scheduler to schedule the refresh of our dashboard data based on various date time rules and events.